You're listening to The Artist Athlete, episode 45. This podcast is dedicated to circus. It's a place for professionals in the industry to share their stories, viewpoints, and information, and a place for outsiders to get a sneak peek into this world. Hey, friends, fans, and enemies, I'm Shannon McKenna, and I'm the host of the Artist Athlete Podcast and the founder of theartistathlete.com. There's no sponsorship for this program whatsoever. I make it myself, I fund it myself, and I do that with the amazing help of listeners just like you. If you've been listening for a while or you're binging all 45 episodes on your cross-country road trip, please consider becoming a Patreon. Patreons give small donations each month to help the podcast survive. All the payments are secure, and you can give as little as a dollar. Go to patreon.com slash theartistathlete to sign up. Again, that's patreon.com slash theartistathlete. And even if you don't want to give me any money at all, um, pop by the Patreon page anyway. Sometimes I've started to stick quotes that I think are really cool from the episodes, or I give my thoughts about the podcast, or sometimes I just kind of treat it like a blog and will write whatever I want on the Patreon. So go check it out. It's patreon.com slash the artist athlete. My guest today is Anka Politz. Anka Politz is the artistic director of the Chameleon Theater and the managing director of Chameleon Productions. The Chameleon's mission is to offer a platform for new circus in Germany and initiate cultural exchanges between artists and creators of culture. Chameleon Productions organizes and produces extraordinary stage shows and events and is a creative agency and networking partner for a contemporary circus. And Anka runs the whole show. She works to bring in artists to her venues, and The Chameleon has launched the careers of reputations of individuals and companies alike around the world. In this interview, Anka talks about how she selects work, what new circus means to her, and the importance of entertainment. If you want to hear more about the Chameleon Theater or other Berlin-based artists, you can check out episode number 13 with Anke van Engelschoven, episode 8 with Philip Tigris, or episode 40 with Florian Sumko. Here's my interview with Anke Politz. Anke Politz, welcome to the Artist Athlete Podcast. Can you say a little in your own words who you are and what you do? Hi, thanks for having me. Um, I'm the artistic director of the Chameleon Theater in Berlin. We are a venue that's presenting New Circus. And I'm also the uh, managing director of the production company, Chameleon Productions. That's basically programming all the shows at the Chameleon, but also producing our own circus work that tours um, someplace else. So I've been reading up on you a little bit, and I read that you were a nurse first. Yes. <laughs> Actually, there was, because um, I don't I don't read German, and I read in like the, is it the Tagesspiegel, the newspaper? Mm-hmm. They, and the translation, when you translated it, said she changed from the decent profession of nursing to uh, artistic director of the chameleon. <laughs> I think everything should be decent somehow, <laughs> but uh, it was not like a change of um, two days or a week even. Mm. I think um, it all explains itself a bit. Um, like I come from East Germany, so I was finishing school when the wall came down and I always wanted to become a journalist and work with music and arts. And my parents were super scared about the new yeah, I don't know, reality. And so they begged me to learn something real first. And this is why I became a nurse. Hmm. And then I went directly after I finished my apprenticeship, I went to university to Berlin to study journalism. And then because I always worked to finance myself, I started working at the PR agency and I fell in love with this kind of work. And I realized I'm really a bad writer, so I should not be a journalist (laughs) at all. 
I started working in PR and marketing, and this is how I um, actually started working um, at and for the Chameleon as running their PR and marketing department. And um, when we started, we uh, were a super small team. It's a private venue still, but we kind of reopened in 2004 after a bankruptcy. And so um, after two weeks, I started to do all the artist contracts as well and to kind of organize rehearsals and set up times. And so slowly but surely, uh, I ended up doing all the stage work. What used to be my hobby um, became my profession. So now I can work with the arts and um, let go of all the marketing and PR things. Oh, wow. That's amazing. But I'm still nursing the artists in some way, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so we um, we have a full production team and crew and we take care 24-7 of their needs. And um, I think the Chameleon has a really strong reputation about being a very caring place for artists. Yeah, I always hear that, that you guys really take care of the artists there. So do you, does Chameleon own the actual physical theater as well as the production company inside of it? We don't own, like we own the brand, it's our company, but we don't own the physical theater. We are tenants uh, in the area of the Hackische Höfe. Mm -hmm. We have an amazing landlord. They really support us. They really want the theater to be there. But unfortunately, we don't own it. Gotcha. <laughs> But it is a private business. That's correct. It's not like a lot of times, especially in the States, you have uh, not for profit organizations in the arts. But my understanding is the chameleons privately owned. Is that correct? It's privately. Yes, it's privately owned. We literally live from selling tickets. Oh, wow. My biggest question is why contemporary circus? Why did the chameleon as a company choose that as the product they wanted to sell? I think it also, um, it basically comes from the history of the chameleon itself. When we reopened the place, 2004, it used to be uh, already uh, be in a variety. So after the wall came down in 1991, um, artists found the place um, in an area that was completely, well, destroyed is probably the wrong word but not really well taken care of so that whole area of Mitte was a very different mm. than it is today and so they found that beautiful old ballroom and they asked hey can we open a theater here and nobody knew who owns it so they just started and they started something they called chameleon because what they wanted to do is create their own programs be artistically free and change, constantly change and try new things. Mm. Mm, and it was super, super successful when it opened. It was really that artist's collective initiative that um, performed, they cr created their own shows. They had so many different programs in regards of open, like stuff like open stages and huge careers started actually at the Chameleon um, there. And I think over the years, with the change of Berlin, that area, audience expectations, that kind of artistic concept didn't really work out anymore, which is why um, they had to give up the place. But one of the owners stayed on board and reopened it. And we all came together saying, hey, our roots basically are variety, are in circus, but what do we want to present now? What we think will also kind of survive as a concept and so we decided we want to create um, new shows we want to present new circus this is something we also found over the years uh, until the moment came where we said okay chameleon equals new circus so um, but it was a development but definitely why it happened has something to do with where we come from how do you define new circus like when you're bringing in a company or um, someone, how do you know that it's not dance or theater with circus components? Do you have a metric for it? I don't think so, because to me, new circus can be a lot of things. And yes, it can have more dance or theater uh, in it. It doesn't necessarily need to have 70 or 80 percent of circus skills. Mm -hmm. To me, New Circus is about creating pieces that are 
in themselves strong enough by either telling a story or having a certain aesthetics or a certain topic they deal with that makes us want to watch it for 90 minutes. And uh, we really try to challenge ourselves, but also to uh, invite our audiences to try new things by not always presenting the same amount of circus, comedy, dance, whatever. We really let artists and companies uh, convince us to take new steps and to try a new yeah, flavor maybe uh, in regards to find out what new circus can be today. I think it's, it's something that is constantly changing. That sounds like, from an artistic perspective, a dream. That sounds so amazing. But from a business perspective, it sounds like a constant risk. Do you know, like you're... I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. How, I know. How do you like uh, ensure, I don't want to say quality, because I don't know if that's quite the right word. But um, when you're looking at companies to bring, how do you ensure that, or like, how do you know an audience will receive them in a way that will sell tickets at all? Well, I think over the years, we kind of have a very good idea about our audience, but also about how far we can go mm. because we went too far. <laughs> and I think, th yes, it is a constant risk and it is a constant trial, if you want to call it like that. To me, it's kind of necessary to do it because we want, we really want to have this artistic vision. And um, what we do in regards of ensuring the quality is we are a very close part of the process. We really only work with people we strongly believe in and trust because you never know what an audience will like or not. And to me, when I look at our theater, it's a small room. People have those small bistro tables. You can have a glass of wine before and the audience basically sits one meter uh, away from the stage to me that whole life experience is about um connections it's about humanity it's about seeing that there's a person on stage giving something unique and incredible to me i always say we have to gain the trust of the audience in the first 20 minutes mm -hmm. and then they are usually really happy to follow us and i think it's 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 many layers, but it really starts from respecting their needs, respecting our own visions, maybe, and, and hopes, and then bringing both together. It's a constant process and the communication, and the piece is never finished. It is an artistic um, kind of paradise, <laughs> but it can be also really hard if it's not working because then we all have to make it work. And how do you know if it's not working? Like I'm thinking, I know big companies like Cirque du Soleil, for example, they have like audience questionnaires that people will fill out and like rate the different acts. And based on those ratings, sometimes things get taken out or put in the shows. How do you know when things aren't working? Do you poll your audience or do you look at ticket sales? I mean, of course, yes. I mean, all of that um, we, we see. And I think sometimes, and this is obviously or honestly the most, yeah, most of the time the reasons that something does not go uh, well is not even because of the show or because of the audience not liking it. Often our challenges are, the weather, the climate change, political stuff that happens in a city, so people stop traveling. I think these kind of external reasons play a much bigger role often when we look at our seasons. But of course, we talk to our audience, we see um, sales numbers, and we pay attention, but we also know what to expect in regards of what kind of program do we produce and as I said, we try to program under an artistic umbrella. Even though we are a private uh, venue, we have some support in regards that if it's not really working out, yeah, we have a kind of safety net. So otherwise, I think it would be almost impossible I see. to work that way. One of the companies that you bring in a lot um, is the Australian company Circa. What attracts you to their work or why do you think you keep going back to them? 
personally, for me, it really is a really, really exciting company that offers many different styles and concepts. So um, bringing them back doesn't necessarily mean you always show exactly the same thing. Also, their artistic or physical language is um, is really strong. Mm. So uh, the process and the coming back together is always really exciting and inspiring kind of way together. But of course, also because our audience really loves them. So um, it's a very successful company. What German companies do you feature at the Chameleon? Or is that something you guys seek to do? I mean, we definitely um, would love to have more German companies in our program. Um, I'm also part of the initiative um, New Circus, Initiative Neue Zirkus. And we hosted our first residency program with actually public uh, support from the city of Berlin last year. So I'm, we're trying to do a lot to support this German circus scene, to develop it, to give, um, to create new opportunities, uh, for German artists. But at the moment, there aren't that many around who, um, have a 90 minute show or even have the structure to create something like this. Um, so we worked a lot with Marcus Pabst. We worked with Eike von Stuckenbrock. We had a season with Florian Zumkehr and his company Analog um, last year. We do everything we can do to support, but I think often companies coming back and other companies not having been there often has something to do with the concept of their shows. Sometimes it's physically just impossible to adapt other shows to our stage. We have a tiny stage. It's really an old historical room Often there are shows with only four acrobats, which is, again, physically impossible to survive a six-month season and 170 shows with only four performers on stage. So I think there are many, many, many reasons and layers or why we do not have a new company with each season and why often companies come back. But also I really like the concept of having friendships, creative artistic friendships with companies and artists and go on a journey together that lasts longer than just one season. How do you start to build those relationships? I think I travel a lot. I see a lot of shows. Whenever somebody asks me for a meeting and or sends me something, I meet and talk. Our system is quite simple in regards of how do we program. It's me. I'm always saying I'm falling in love with an idea or with uh, a company or the person in a way that I I see their dream or that I think, wow, this should be ours too. So it's uh, not really rational. <laughs> <laughs> and so it always starts with a meeting, with um, a conversation and with finding out if we get along also because it is an intense um, season but also an intense situation um, coming back to the risk. So um, we all we always have to become one team and we are sitting in the same boat. And so I think this is how the process starts and then it's dealing, spending enough time with the concept, um, the choice of artists or stage setting, whatever, to make the decision, okay, let's do it. And then the regular production schedule and um, process kicks in. When you approach a company, is it they already have a production and you bring it into the chameleon or do you produce a new work from that company for the six months? Yeah, it can be either or. Often it's way more difficult to find an existing show and bring it to our stage because of all the other reasons. And so, but... It also happened. I think most of the time we create new work together or they create new work for us. Um, but there have been shows which just needed um, adapting or adapta- adaptation. And so um, then they came to us. What do you think is the biggest barrier for people or companies uh, not able to create a 90-minute show? Well, I think it's always financial... Huh. or structural um, situations. 
So um, often a company is just not able to deliver enough of content to probably convince presenters. And of course, I'm also not, you know, if somebody can't show me anything or hasn't created anything, it's super hard because the imagination is endless. And so we both might think we talk about the same thing, but then we don't. And so um, I think it really comes from resources that uh, makes the difference. And often, and which, and this is the reason why I'm doing so much uh, in regards of um, networking and also um, political work in Germany to get New Circus the needed support and appreciation because mostly all the companies that come to us come from abroad and they all in some way or the other have um, financial support, public support. Yeah, I actually, I have a quote from it here where you talk about how in Germany, there's no shortage of talent or ideas or creative urgency, but the projects are disadvantaged because they are not recognized in the same way. I'm interested mm -hmm. in Germany, what, uh, what kind of funding or grants or what is given to a theater or opera or other things that's not given to new circus? I think everything <laughs> at the moment there is there is no public funding for new circus. There are um, some amazing um, examples of funding like ours uh, when you look at the residency like the Berlin Circus Festival uh, like um, smaller projects and it's constantly changing so the situation is getting better each day but it is a process that has started maybe five years ago. So um, I think now artists can actually apply for project funds without having to lie and say, we do performance arts. <laughs> so now they are allowed to put uh, circus arts inside. And in the past, that was already the, like, the reason for getting declined because circus was not recognized as being art. And officially, it's still not. But there are so many people on all sides that change their minds, that uh, support us now, that try to make it work. It also depends on the region in Germany. I think when you look at Nordrhein-Westfalen, Köln, there's a lot of support there. So it's happening slowly, but it's um, certainly happening. So where do you see the future of Contemporary Circus going at the Chameleon? Are there any companies that you find really exciting that you want to work with? Definitely. I think as, it's not just companies. To me, it's often also countries, cultures. It's to show just a bigger uh, variety of who's around and what kind of influences each um, circus or artist has. So um, I think for now or until now, we only showed a tiny, like a tiny bit of uh, what's possible. And that's what I hope, you know, to invite new people to meet different countries and um, languages, artistic languages to show our audience. It actually is something you never know what will happen, but you can trust this art form because it's always going to be something that people created with full passion and dedication and respect because we are an entertainment stage, right? People come to us to have a good night. So the chameleon will never be a place where you have super duper abstract, disturbing um, circus work, which is also really important. But I think to me, what the true beauty of that art form also is that it is a place where everyone of society can meet. It does not require a certain artistic knowledge. And I think this is a great opportunity to use that art form, that universal language to bring people together, to make them meet people that might have, I don't know, weird opinions about or to deal with topics they wouldn't in the first place. But suddenly they find themselves in a situation they find really comfortable. And then they leave the house and think, wow, I just learned something about a different country, culture or music and or lifestyle. And I actually, I'm okay with that. Have you seen instances of that already? Can you think of any? At, our, yeah, uh, at any at specific times that that's happened? 
I mean, of course, we have often, I don't know, yeah, we have many conversations and often like in the last season with Peep Show, there was a scene uh, where a male performer came out in a G-string and did a hand balancing act and uh, really close to the stage, almost naked. And so there were comments in the audience saying, well, if it would have been a woman, I would have been, uh, it would have been better for me, you know, hmm. these kind of things. I think it's a tiny thing, but it actually um, targets sexism on stage and targets what's the female picture we present or what kind of expectations do we have towards it. And these are nice or what nice, but good conversations to have, I think. Um, we often go on stage and um, literally say that the chameleon and also new circus is something that is open to everything and everyone, wherever people come from, what kind of religion or life concept they have. Everyone is welcome. And to be honest, often also these kind of moments, you can feel um, attention in the room because not, not necessarily everyone agrees. And so... There are many smaller moments and details, but the success or the positive uh, feedback is always a great motivation to keep doing it. I'm I'm thinking so much. I'm just like cracking up because to me, Berlin always feels like the super progressive city. It always feels like it's so alive. People are filled with new ideas, trying new things, expressing themselves in all these ways. So it's interesting that you say that, make a statement like that at a theater in Berlin and people are tense about it. Well, I think we all are part of a society that most certainly lives in Berlin is, and is very obvious, but it's not a majority. So we live uh, and like all my friends, everyone I work with shares the same political opinion, shares the same openness towards society and other people, but that is not what other people experience in their jobs, for example. Mm. So I think we kind of tend to move in, in bubbles, you know, <laughs> we live, I always say I live in this beautiful rainbow bubble, <laughs> but this is not, not, but this is not necessarily like a true a reflection of what the society or how society is. And we see that when we look at political uh, movements. And um, so I think it's quite important to understand it's not about distancing us from them, but to understand it's, it's us, we all are one society. And if we give up talking to each other, or if we judge the other person for having a really weird opinion in our opinion, uh, we kind of make the distance and the problem bigger. So mm. to me, a theater is um, is a meeting point for everyone. And we should, and, and again, coming back to the word respect, try to respect each other. That, that, does, doesn't, that does not mean that we have to tolerate, tolerate everything, but it's certainly important to not forget. What actions do you take to reach outside of the bubble? How do you bring in people who would not normally come to the theater? As I said, we are an entertainment place. People come to us because they want to have a good time. People come to us and they don't go to Schaubühne for a reason. And so this automatically means that um, we have like a really good mix of audiences. So there are people who also go to Schaubühne. There are some really artistically interested people in but we also have people who have never been to a theater before we have very young um guests school groups and um families who come with their grandparents so i think we kind of have a really we have a really good reflection of all parts of society did you have a specific strategy to access those people or do they just come I mean, I think some just come because what I said, we are around, we have a strong reputation, but also as our shows are so different from each other, as we do very drastic changes in regards of programming, it always starts with looking at the show, looking at the piece, thinking who could be interested in that or 
um, who could be the right um, audience for it. And then we develop certain communication strategies, PR strategies. So we often say copy paste that does absolutely not work at the chameleon mm. so each season is a new start for all of us in all departments so we look at prices we look at packages um is this a show for families oh great super let's start with a family package oh no that's not a show for families let's not have it at the moment because it would would lead people to the wrong direction or something like this you know yeah. So we really look at the show and um, start to adjust and um, uh, in every kind of way to make sure that uh, we find people who would like this kind of artistic work. That's so interesting. It's such like going back over and over again, this idea of like artistic sovereignty that you have. Because so often I hear like, oh, in this festival, we need a kids show. So we have this population. We need a sexy show. So we have the like late night show. But it sounds like for you all, you kind of figure out what you want to show and then find the audience for it. Mm -hmm. I think it's a bit like this. In some, like, there's one big thing that all of our shows should have in common there should be um, strong in regards of the concept and um, the performances. And it can be a strong um, acting moment or a strong circus acrobatic moment or a strong dance or musical moment, but it has to be strong. So, um, but beside that, I think, yes, with each show, we look for a new audience. And luckily, we are in Berlin, a city with lots of tourists, with lots of people who live here. It's certainly possible to go that way. I think when you run a festival, it's a completely different situation. Okay, so now I'm definitely getting nervous because I know... I know how Germans like to be prompt, and I want to make sure I get you out on time. But I do have <laughs> one more so question. Kind. I'm not that kind of German, unfortunately. <laughs> I should. <laughs> okay. Good. Well, that's a relief. But I do, I have one more question for you. Okay. Which is the question okay. I ask everyone at the end of the interviews. Mm -hmm. And the question is, what advice would you give to yourself at the beginning of your career? <laughs> and you can define your career however you want, if it's being the artistic director at the chameleon if it's like beginning in your nursing time whatever uh what advice would you wow. give to yourself that's not an easy question to answer i know that's um, why i gave you some time yeah. <laughs> well i think it's a, it's it's more of a personal advice hmm. i give to myself and to everyone find your own strength and be proud of it and um live your career or life from this perspective. So often we start from outside to think, what do people expect or what does the situation need? And then we feel maybe not enough or um, on the right point in, yeah, in that story. So I think it really starts with self-confidence and being honest to yourself about what you actually can or cannot do because it's completely impossible to be perfect at everything. And so what I learned is to find people who are actually much better, stronger, more competent than me, and to build and set up a structure, a team, so that we all can enjoy our own ways of how we are and how we work, but all together create something really beautiful and you certainly have with the chameleon for sure i think so I, I i really think so and and this is why for me it's super difficult to answer something without being personal because that's what we are how we work it always comes down to this which is what makes it sometimes also really hard because it's not a job it's, it's not a product it's 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 something that is part of our lives, of course. Why do you think it is so hard for people to operate from their own strengths or to feel that? Because everything around us is telling us how to be, uh, what to be. I mean, that's, that's how it works, right? Um, and I'm also not 
I'm not saying that we should not raise our children and let them find out by themselves. I also like that my parents told me how to say thank you and please and these <laughs> kind of things. Sure, yeah. But I come from from a world where you were not supposed to speak up because it could be wrong. And I think if you really believe something or if you le- really think this is the right thing to do, then say it. Don't be afraid of it being wrong. And um, I think it it really comes from a society telling us the complete opposite. I mean, it also tells us anything is possible, which is not true. <laughs> but I think anything is possible if I know a bit about myself. What do you think it, it was about you that made you find this strength? I mean, you your parents told you to become a nurse, and then, uh, which is very practical. And so where did that happen where you kind of changed or entered this really artistic uh, world, this bubble? I think a lot of it comes from failing. (laughs) You know, you fail at something and you have to try again. Uh, It definitely makes you stronger. And um, but also from I really never lost the ability to admire someone or something. I'm not an artist, but I love art. I need books and music and paintings and theater and circus in my life to be a human person, a human being, you know. And I think this emotional, like, I always, I think, approach things in an emotional kind of way. And then you get so many beautiful things back and you meet so many amazing people and your life gets so rich and that also makes you way stronger of course you're not alone Anke thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today it was my pleasure that was my interview with Anke Politz because Anke isn't an artist or she doesn't define herself as an artist I was so pleasantly surprised to hear her process of choosing work and working with productions was so emotional. For her, it's based on feelings and relationships instead of numbers and audience preferences. In fact, her strategy for the chameleon is to make the work and then find the audience to fit the work, rather than trying to figure out what will sell best to an audience. It's a risky strategy for a company that subsists almost entirely off ticket sales, and it's a testament to Anka, her collaborators, and to New Circus that taking these creative risks works so well. If you want to learn more about the Chameleon Theatre, you can visit Chameleon, that's C-H-A-M-A-E-L-E-O-N, chameleon-productions.com, or you can find them on Instagram at Cam Theater, that's C-H-A-M-T-H-E-A-T-E-R, Chameleon Theater. As for me, as always, I am on Instagram at the underscore artist underscore athlete for aerial training tips and information. You can find me on Facebook, The Artist Athlete. You can go to my website, www.theartistathlete.com. Or if you love what you're listening to, hit me up on Patreon, patreon.com slash theartistathlete. Thanks for tuning in, friends, fans, and enemies. Talk at you next week. The Artist Athlete Podcast is supported solely by donations from people like you. Here's what some of those people have to say. Hi, I'm Katie Betts, and I'm the director of Shared Culture Concepts, which is a full-service marketing company for circus and performing arts. You can visit our website at www.sharedcultureconcepts.com. On the website, you can find a copy of our ebook, which covers basics of marketing, specifically for circus educators, coaches, studio owners, and circus artists. Aloha! My name is Beth Russell, and I live on the beautiful island of Maui, Hawaii. I am an aerial artist and movement instructor specializing in chakra yoga to keep me balanced and grounded. I play with silks, trapeze, lira, rope, acro, aerial yoga and dance, slack lining, pole, bungee and climbing. Really anything that goes up and allows me to explore 3D space. You can find my dedicated aerial page on Instagram at Maui Aerialist. If you find yourself coming to Maui, let's play.
Hey there, friends, fans, and enemies. This is Chris Alston, Patreon of the Artist Athlete Podcast. Straps artist and Lyra performer and acrobat out of Greenville, South Carolina. So if you're ever passing through, make sure to stop in and see me and my friends. We have a wonderful space and we'd love to see you. Hi, my name is Erica Lee. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri, and I'm an aerialist. I teach performing arts to elementary school during the day and do pole and slings and rope by night. I really, really like the Artist Athlete podcast because it gives me a lot of circus goals to look forward to. It gives me a lot of insight on what's going on around the world in circus. And um, that's why I'm Patreon. Hello, all. Thank you for tuning in to the Artist Athlete podcast. I am Opal Schwartz from Minneapolis, Minnesota. If you're ever in the city, feel free to stop by the Aviary Minneapolis. It's a great time. With that, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your week. And goodbye.